And I don't know what heaven will look like, I don't know what God will look like, but I do fundamentally believe that there is a hereafter. And I, I want to believe that. I have to believe in my mind that I'm going to see my daughter Karen again. Mm -hmm. That, for me, is what I want. But it was very interesting because my sister, bless her, died about four or five years ago, and she was suffering from dementia and was in a care home at the time. And all the time she talked about going home, meaning going back to where we were brought up, uh, to see m mommy and daddy, you know. And uh, literally 24 hours before she died, she said, oh, look, there's mommy and daddy and they've come with my bicycle. And it was as clear as crystal to her. So in a weird way, uh, so, you know, it's such an unknown thing that I, I think there might be a feeling of your loved ones almost coming to bring you across, if that's what you believe. I know a lot of mm. very sceptical people around. Um, Do you take but... comfort from that? Well, I get comfort from that in my head. Mm. And when I lost my daughter, a lot of people said, did you lose your faith? Mm -hmm. And I went, no, I didn't, because I wanted my faith. I needed that faith. And, for example, when I find an isolated feather, I'm talking about if you find one isolated feather, white feather, say, in a hard technical area, my daughter used to say, oh, it was an angel's calling card. And now I say, it's Karen's calling card. Mm -hmm. And I don't care whether people believe it or not. But it brings me great comfort. I pick them up, stick them down here, keep them. I've got jars of them at home. It's comforting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and don't you think that it doesn't really matter whether it's true or not or yeah. whatever? If it, I, if it of, I, I don't believe in it, but I, I understand the comfort in it, and I like to think that it gives people comfort. And and you know, I just sort of think that. But, that, but then we had this conversation and I said to Gloria exactly what I've just said. And then I pointed out that actually my close friend died five years ago. And as I came out from the funeral, this single white feather descended and I still have it. I keep it in my diary and I keep it there the whole time with me. So even though That's I don't so believe... Surprising. Yeah. See, for everything I know of you, I would never in a million years... No, would you? not at all. But if somebody said to me that Jane had done that, I'd say, no way. Because yeah. you're incredibly way. practical and pragmatic. Yeah. I'd, I'd, love to believe, I'd love to believe in it. I'd love to believe that when I die, I'm going to see all the people mm. that, mm. you know, have died before me. Um, so what but do you I have feel such about a, I have such a kind was. of a practical brain yeah. that I just yeah. can't quite... Can't quite. But I, I, I think it's must a bit be because you kept yeah. it. Yeah, I, but uh, but I think also it makes me think of her when ah, I see right, the feather. Okay. But, yeah. but I, a little part of me thinks you know when you have flu and you uh, really bad flu and you're in bed and you're sort of hallucinating a bit and you want to drink and you hallucinate that you're having a drink. I think there's a bit of that when you die is that all those memories of people that you loved and cared for become very vivid in a mm. sort of a hallucin genic kind of way but and maybe, maybe wouldn't that's it be what it great is. if that is what happens to us in the next life that we live in this almost our spirits live in this almost hallucinogenic atmosphere where everyone that we loved yeah. is around us and i suppose that that i suppose it reminds me of uh, earlier this year my my friend lost her mum really really suddenly and uh, mark run the marathon for her uh, to raise money for mm -hmm. the pancreatic cancer and um, you know how busy it is in the marathon? London is just heaving, isn't it? And there's not literally a space to stand. Anyway, we've been fighting to what to get a pitch to see Mark go past. He went past. We turned round, took two steps, and suddenly there wasn't a single person there. But lying right in front of us, facing that way, was a perfect pink, pink, pink chrysanthemum, which is her mum's favourite flower. Well. I wouldn't really think of anything about this. Somebody said, but "What to see her just?" And she just cried, and she was this phoning is your friend, her family. My friend. Was. She was phoning her family. She was just like, and I was watching it. And I got goosebumps, and I thought, that really feels like a sign. If it's not a sign, it doesn't matter because mm. all of this comfort that she's getting from this. Well, the comfort's the word, though. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. What does it matter if? Because we, we can't ever know, can we? No. We can't know. So well, what, What's interesting as well, in, in, in terms of the, um, the, the visitations, you know, the, mm. the, the, the people who were, who were questioned. Um, thank you for those of you who got in touch. Olivia says, about an hour before my mum died, uh, we were all around her bed. She sat bolt upright in the bed and said, go away, Mick, I'm not ready yet. This was my dad, who had died 12 years before her. She then Gosh. lay back down and soon after took her last breath. Mm. Um, I, I could imagine that's that is incredibly comforting. If, yeah. um, 
you know, if you were to witness something like that. Uh, when Ben says, when my grandma was in hospital nearing death, she kept mumbling about people that had passed away, such as my granddad and her mother. I believe they had come, just like Gloria said, they'd come to help guide her over to the other side. Mm, you know, when... when my, I, sorry. Sorry, go on. <clears throat> no, I was just going to say, I also believe in earth angels. I mean, we're taking that to the extreme in some people's eyes. And I'll sub this story, but very briefly, we were driving down to France, the, the car was full of household things because we were going to a family home. We had an accident. As it turns out, I'd driven across um, a road out. I must have fallen asleep. And uh, literally, uh, the car came to, to rest against a concrete planter. I mean, it was shocking. And all the pompier, all the ambulance, everything there. And all of a sudden, this girl came out of the crowd, long blonde girl, speaking perfect English, whereas nobody spoke English in this small village. And she took care of everything. Now, when we went back to find that girl, Nobody knew of this English girl who allegedly worked in the cafe, and I believe that that girl... I mean, she existed, but mm. I believe she was sent to us on that day mm. to look after us, and so I put her down as an earth angel. You know, the, life is full of very odd things that are unexplained, but as long as they make you feel good and they, and they help yeah. you out, who are, who are we to question?